Shalom and welcome to the first episode of TV7's Times Observer. I'm Jonathan Hessen, and co-hosting with me this program is uh, my dear friend, Amir Tzalfati. Uh, Amir, how about you start with prayer, and then we immediately dive no into problem. today's topics. Okay. Father, we thank you that you are the creator of times, and uh, you gave us the understanding of the times and the seasons in which we live. And Father, we know that there are things we cannot change, and you never called us to change the world events, but you called us, Father, to observe, to see, and to learn from it, and definitely to get ready for what you are about to do with us. So, Father, we ask that today in this uh, brand new line of uh, programs that we begin here in TV7, we ask that your name will be glorified, your plans will be unveiled through your word, and that your children will be greatly encouraged. And also, Father, uh, your children also will be educated and prepared. We thank you and we bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Amir, uh, it's uh, an exciting day, exciting time to it start is. the Times Observer mm -hmm. and uh, really conveying the, the picture from a Bible-based perspective and making that uh, context between reality to biblical prophecy and understanding how do we relate to this yes. uh, time, and, and uh, even though we are in this world and not from this world, so we do observe, uh, but uh, we do so sometimes proactively and understand of how to pray, for who to pray, and uh, really uh, to join together as one unit, as one body. Amen. But let's set the stage. We have Israel, we have our northern sector that for the first time uh, since I remember at least, or I've researched this extensively, uh, the northern front has become one sector of operation, Lebanon and Syria together. Uh, Turkey, of course, uh, is uh, on one end of the equation, then Russia is operating freely in uh, this sector as well. And then we have also Iran operating in this sector as well, three uh, countries that are mentioned uh, in the Bible, of course, the, the derivative thereof. How do you see the northern sector in biblical scripture bringing it yes. to today's uh, reality? Yeah, well, first of all, the Bible is very clear about how Israel was born while the entire surroundings of it was very hostile towards it. In fact, uh, Psalm 83 says that... Uh, all those nations surrounding us, I mean, we're talking about Lebanon and Syria and Jordan and Egypt of today, all of them sought to cut us off from being a nation that the name of Israel will be remembered no more. Remember, it was just uh, less than an hour after we declared that Palestine is now going to be called the State of Israel. And by the way, even the State Department in the United States did not know what the name of this country is going to be. So when President Truman had the, the announcement that uh, he's recognizing it, he said the Jewish state, and then he crossed it when he heard Ben-Gurion and he said, and he wrote Israel, because the name of Israel is that game changer. And this is exactly why all those <laughs> nations around us, they wanted that the name of Israel will be remembered no more. Mm. And then of course, at that time, we were so weak and we were so small and we lacked all the, uh, the infrastructures and the strength and the power, but it was an act of God. He's the one that prepared the land for the mass return of the Jews in Ezekiel 36. He's the one that rescued the remnant from the Holocaust of Europe and brought them physically. You know, right now the world is helping uh, refugees all around to, to get to safe haven. Nobody helped us. Nobody helped us. And we were subjected to a genocide that was the most well-documented one of all and was also admitted by the perpetrators. Mm. And at the same time, not only that he brought us back, but he sheltered us and secured us so those countries around us eventually gave up. And so, in 1973, Jordan already decided not to participate in the coming war. In 1979, Egypt decided that no more wars with Israel, let's sign peace. And then we see what's going on in Syria. It 
basically does not exist anymore as a sovereign country. And Lebanon is on its way to the same thing. So here we are now moving forward to the next chapter of God's uh, amazing story with Israel from Psalm 83 to Ezekiel 38. From a country that was almost annihilated by the surrounding nations, what I call the first tier of countries that are bordering with Israel, we move now to a strong Partic- a strong player in the middle. We're somebody said that we are the eighth most powerful nation in the world, and we are right now energy superpower, technology superpower, cybersecurity superpower, medical engineering, um, um, financial technology. All of that, Israel is now a huge powerhouse that the world can no longer ignore. And for the first time, hey, we live in the days where Sheba and Dedan, that part of the world of Saudi and the Gulf states, are now flocking to, to make peace with Israel. Mm. And this is amazing because that brings us to Ezekiel 38. And Ezekiel 38 says there will be perpetrators, there will be attackers coming from the north, but there will be those that will protest it. And these are Sheba and Dedan. Mm-hmm. And so here we are. Look, Jonathan, we are the generation our parents saw the birth of Israel, and we see the swing now to Ezekiel 38. We see how all the stage in the Middle East is getting ready for what you and I know is Gog from the land of Magog that is going to come and lead with him. All the nations that are mentioned here are Turkey of today, Iran of today, Russia of today, and of course, from the south and the east will come Libya and Sudan, which both of them are not really countries that are deciding for themselves anything. Indeed. But they are obviously having a um, superior country that is operating. And I think it's very important to to note, and this is something that uh, when I look at, uh, at this, it's uh, always very apparent to me, but I know it's not apparent to everyone. It's not the people themselves that we're speaking about when we're speaking about Russia. No. When we're speaking about Iran or Turkey. Uh, I, I have plenty of friends from all three nations. Uh, We love them dearly. Many brethren in Christ. Iran is one of the countries where Christianity is currently in the most rapid growth worldwide. It's amazing. Behold, Israel has a YouTube channel in Farsi. Amazing. I mean, we we teach the Iranians. Mm. Uh, We believe that most of the Iranians do not agree with what the Ayatollahs are doing. Correct. But unfortunately, the Ayatollahs are in power right now. Correct. And, and they're not. Therefore, the institutions yeah. we're referring to. Same with Erdogan. Same with Erdogan. And, oh, can you tell a Russian that Putin is not uh, someone that's supposed to rule the country? You, you know, uh, you, you need to watch, uh, mm. you know, your back because uh, some strange poison might hit you somewhere. Uh, listen, um, we yeah, we, we when we talk about those nations, we definitely talk about leadership that may be even against the will of the people, but nevertheless, the leadership is controlling the military power, which will be the one that will exercise this uh, strike that thankfully will be uh, uh, dealt with by God himself and not any other country. And it may be this leadership today, as you mentioned, uh, their uh, their names or uh, leadership in the future. I I don't know if it's necessarily right. today's leadership right. especially not with iran with the rumors that we might even lost this uh, supreme leader yeah well <laughs> no, there you go uh, the uh, the rumors are out there but of course it's not substantiated or corroborated at this stage so uh i usually try to refrain yes. from those uh uh points but uh Many questions arise when we're talking about the various nations. It also says that Saudi Arabia, for instance, um, which uh, at some point will normalize its relations with Israel and will even uh, somehow condemn or or, uh, protest protest, uh, the attack from the north. Um, Now, we heard just uh, this week uh, the uh, it was... No, actually, last week exactly in the Manama Dialogue Forum, we heard Prince uh, uh, Tulki uh, Al Saud come out and say, uh, uh, Israel, yeah. you are yeah. the last Western colonizer yeah. of parts of the yeah. Middle East, uh, indicating basically that you are the stranger in our midst. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. Where is this standing when when we hear is this now from the old generations because he is in his 70s and, yes. and from the older generations who still wants to hold on mm. to not accepting wholeheartedly Israeli uh, uh, existence? Or is this uh, still sentiments that are trying to reemerge yeah. after so much progress has been made? I think it's the two together, the combination of the two. On one hand, you do have the older generation that is holding on to the old ideas. Um, but on the other hand, you know that they say that in the Middle East, uh, there is no income tax on words. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not your words that matter, it's your actions. And the last time I checked, Saudi Arabia just agreed that Israeli planes will fly above its airspace. Mm -hmm. This is normalization. Normalization mm -hmm. is not something on paper. It's something on the ground or in the air. The last time I checked, the Israeli prime minister, the leader of the the, the country that is colonizing uh, parts of the Middle East, went to meet one-on-one -on -one the crown prince, not number three, not number five, number two of Saudi Arabia, where? In, no, in Naum. In, in, so Naum is a symbol of the new Saudi Arabia with the new generation. Neo in Greek, new. Exactly. M for Mustakabal, exactly. for the future. future in the new future and the new leadership and the new mindset to the point that the good friend of, of Mohammed bin Salman, a journalist and a, a lawyer, just uh, wrote in one of the major newspapers a few weeks ago that actually Al-Aqsa is in Saudi Arabia, not in Jerusalem. What do you want from the Jews? Actually, Saudi Arabia contains all three holiest sites for Islam, and thus Al-Quds is not the holy when it comes to Islam, it's the holy when it comes to the Jewish people. Now, you are, this was in an official newspaper in Saudi Arabia. So you see that, yes, the old generation is still paying <laughs> uh, the, 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 the respect to the old views with words, but in actions, we see a different reality. Mm. Jonathan, we live to see that. Our parents, not, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing. Could you imagine that Israelis, as we speak right now, are enjoying Burj Khalifa and Burj Al Arab and and uh, walking freely in the streets of Dubai? Unless you had a foreign passport, it wasn't possible, of no. course. Um, <clears throat> and nevertheless, if you, and, if, and if you had a foreign passport and you had a yarmulke, you would hide it. Indeed, you never ever showed that you are Israel. Today, Israeli flag is next to the signs of the Israeli produce in the markets of Dubai. Mm. I mean, this is unheard of. Absolutely. This uh, reality that we're living in is indeed a reality that, uh, you know what, praise God. Yes, it is. Praise God, is. because ultimately when there is peace, uh, war is distancing from us and, and we don't want war. It's not like we're... Look, there is going to be war. a war. We can't run it away from it. It is going to happen. <laughs> but until then... We're going to do everything possible to avoid it as uh, long as possible, regardless of the fact that we are anticipating with uh, a lot of anticipation yes. if i may add uh the the return of, of yes. christ uh, that he may bring us to him and yes. ultimately that we may come back and and with him yes but uh, you know jonathan a lot of a lot of bible believers are afraid of the word peace they immediately connect the word peace with the antichrist and this is sad. The Antichrist will introduce peace. There is no doubt about it. But it's a false peace that will not last. And it's a peace to basically fool the Jews and uh, to accept him later on as God, nothing less than that. But, but the Bible, when it, we, we, we look at Bible prophecy in Ezekiel, when you enter into the door of Ezekiel 38, Israel is safe, secure, and prosperous. Mm. There is a, an element of peace here. And then comes the war. And I want to, it, it's important that people are not always panicking when there is peace in the Middle East. In order for, for so much of Bible prophecy to happen, there has to be peace. A war will not bring Saudi Arabia and the Emirates to support Israel. It's peace, mm -hmm. basically, that will bring that. So in order for Ezekiel to come to pass, there has to be peace before that. So they will protest the war against Israel. Mm. And therefore, we should not look at peace in the Middle East as something bad 
that immediately is connected to the Antichrist. No, there are certain things that must happen for, for moving the embassy to Jerusalem. It has to happen. How can you build a temple eventually when we're gone if Jerusalem is not your capital? If you don't have any measure of, of, of sovereignty there, how can you, you know, that's why I'm, I'm trying to say these are the type of programs where we can bring people to the right perspective of the events here. Absolutely. One of the points that I think is always very important to mention is uh, uh, what is Mount Zion all about? What is Mount Moriah if not the connection between God and man, the point of promise of God to Abraham who ultimately proclaimed the name of the Lord mm -hmm. through his seed to all yes. of the nations. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's another prophecy that was fulfilled mm -hmm. ultimately. But um, now we, we hear, for instance, uh, something that I hear in the back halls of Jerusalem, um, a lot of alarm over a statement made by Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, where he came out and said, Jerusalem is an Ottoman city Mm -hmm. It needs to be re uh, regarded as such. And ultimately, uh, also in, in one of his speeches to uh, the, the uh, Muslim Federation of North America and, and uh, different organizations in, uh, in the United States, he also once again proclaimed, uh, look, who are the ones who protect Jerusalem? Who are the ones who fight for Jerusalem? Turkey. And he emphasizes that every time, over and over and over again. And I believe that it, it's as much physical as it is spiritual, yes. ultimately. But give us a little bit of, of insight. What is the biblical prophecy pertaining to this eagerness yeah. to reconquer yeah. Jerusalem? It's a fascinating question, Jonathan, and I tell you why. The, the conflict that Israel has with, with Iran, for example, Everybody understands it. Iran wants to develop nuclear weapon, and Iran funds terrorist organizations, and Israel is the target. And so, of course, Israel is on a clear confrontation with their ayatollahs in Iran. But Israel has been an ally of Turkey for the longest time. Israel actually had Turkey as the greatest ally throughout the 80s and the 90s. And of course, ever since Erdogan came to power, things have shifted and changed. It's funny because I heard that when he was the mayor of, um, Istanbul. of Istanbul, he actually accepted uh, the, the Kurdish uh, population there and took care of them and, and told them they can speak their language. I heard it from Kurds yesterday. And it's interesting how he flipped to become now the one that will, uh, of course, resurrect the Ottoman Empire. Now, that might have been in the back of his, of his mind already then, but now he's in that power position to do it. And so, I understand why we're going to fight with Iran and why Iran wants to destroy us. But what about Turkey? Turkey is the one that wants to control Jerusalem. Very, very simple. He's not even hiding it. He's saying it. He already has some charity organizations within Eastern Jerusalem. He interferes in the affairs of the Temple Mount. He's doing whatever he can to undermine every effort to, to give the Saudis some control, to maintain the Jordanian control. He wants to lead the Sunni world. He's, I'm not even saying Arab world. He's not interested in... And, and he sees it as legitimate, that's I it. can tell you. Yes, obviously. Po uh, at point. Look, at, he's right. When you think about it, he's right. He did control Jerusalem. Well, the Ottomans controlled Jerusalem exactly. more than the kingdom of Judah. Absolutely. You know, since 517 until 1917. 1517. 1517, yeah. sorry, 19, until 1917. 400 years. 400 years Absolutely. controlled Jerusalem, ultimately lost Jerusalem and, and the, the region. Uh, um, it's a big blow for them. At the Augusta Victoria, when yes. he signed the, the, the treaty with uh, the Brits. Yes. It is a significant yeah. corner piece of legacy and the point where the Ottomans defeated the Mamluks. Exactly. It, exactly. And, th and that's the thing. We're, by the way, we're, we're watching Iranians want to resurrect the Persian Empire. We're watching Russia wants to resurrect the Tsar uh, era. And we're watching Turkey wants to resurrect the Ottoman Empire. All three of them are, are going back in history to and, and and they're looking at what they used to be and now they want to resurrect these things but 
if Iran is actively attacking Israel militarily or is, you know, preparing that, Turkey is sabotaging Israel in other means, <laughs> other ways. And eventually the Israeli uh, stance uh, uh, will bring them to the point, look, if he cannot touch Jerusalem, he's humiliated, obviously. If he cannot become the leader of the... So what happens is there comes an opportunity where Russia is leading, spearheading an assault and and Iran will come and join them for its own reasons. Fakhrizadeh is only one. And uh, Turkey will, will join them for its own reasons, just like, you know, to gain control over Jerusalem, to resurrect the Ottoman Empire. Everyone has his own reasons. God could see that 2,700 years ago, and the prophet Ezekiel is more accurate than today's newspaper, hmm. than today's TV channels, at least most of them. And thankfully, the prophet Ezekiel is getting a stage here in this studio. Because look, this is the truth. This is the life. This is the way you can, you can you know, say whatever you want. You and I know no Middle East analyst, no Middle East analyst could see the peace with the Arab states happening before anything that moves with the Palestinians. Mm. No one. They always said, unless you sign peace with the Palestinians, you'll never have peace with any of the Gulf states. We were all proved wrong. Now, the Bible never was never proved wrong. If you read the Bible, you would know, A, I don't see in the Bible Palestinian state, and B, I don't see in the Bible where the Arab countries are staying away from us. I actually see that they protest the assault, the attack on Israel. So how do you explain that? How do you reconcile that? Only by watching it what happened in the last three years. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, I can't believe it. About three years ago, the president of the United States of America acknowledged Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And two and a half years ago, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. And less than six months ago, Arab countries started one after the other signing peace or at least normalization with Israel. We live in those days. These are the days of Ezekiel. Amazing. These are the days of Ezekiel. And unless you understand that this is more accurate than anything else that people are telling you, you'll never be able to understand what's going on in this world. I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, we live in fascinating times. Uh, but uh, what does it mean to us as believers practically, mm -hmm. other than praying, obviously, for yeah. the peace of Jerusalem? Shalom, shalom, Yerushalayim. God right. calls us to actually ask Mm -hmm. for the peace of Jerusalem, not only pray for it, mm -hmm. but beyond that, what can we do? Well, I think that one of the main reasons why God gave his children words of the prophets is A, so they're not scared, and B, that they are prepared. Mm. These are the two things. Nothing here is supposed to scare the believers, but it's supposed to prepare the believers. And I mm. believe that... The rapture of the church is around the corner. And as we already talked about in, in Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13, the, the 10 virgins, there's a lot of people that think they're Christians. There are a lot of people that think that they, they do things according to the book, but they do not have the Holy Spirit. They don't have a personal relationship with the Lord. And they are not saved. <laughs> they just, they are religious people. And I believe that as we come towards the very end where we are going to be, look, we read it. The door is going to be closed. Mm. And they will say, Lord, Lord, we did this and this. And they say, I don't know you. I don't. Well, how do you know someone that has a relationship with you? Mm. And so my point is, from everything we do here and whatever we talk about here, the bottom line is, are you ready? Indeed. Are you ready? Not just buying food. You don't need to buy food and shelter and ammunition. No. You need to check your heart and your life. And that's the question. And one cornerstone that I think God, Jesus calls us, okay? Talk about him. Yeah. You're seeing your friends, mm -hmm. your family. They're not believers. Uh, communicate with them. Yeah. Tell them, I want to communicate with you about what I believe because I love you. Mm -hmm. Because I want to see you with me yeah. in heaven which I am convinced from the bottom of my heart and my soul and my being and understanding 
that this is where I'm going to go, yes. and this is the only path yeah. to go through. Yeah, I believe that Jesus made it very clear. When he comes to take us, he wants to find us doing the Father's business. Mm. And he wants us to be about his business. And as I shared with you, I believe we were given a box full of gospel pills. Mm. And all we need to do is to give it to the people. Whether they take it or not, it's their problem. But we need to give it to them. And we do not need to wait for them to be uh, making any certain declaration or confession of faith just so we can add some uh, another uh, uh, some belt uh, button or whatever. We, we need to some sow the seeds, some water, but God gives the increase. Don't, don't take it to yourself as if this is, this is about you and what mm-hmm. you said. But you need to sow the seed mm-hmm. and you need to water it. Being proactive for the kingdom, yes. I think it's so important. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially, as you noted, uh, there's so many people who say, Lord, Lord. But when, the day he comes back, he, he's going to question a lot of people. And uh, as we know, the, the prophecies are very clear. A remnant will return. Sha'ar yes. Yeshuv. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a name of his son <laughs> yes. at the time that uh, uh, when he prophesied this through the names of his children. But uh, we're drawing near to the end of the program. And uh, I'd like to uh, just mention uh, we are right now at the, the footstool, at the beginning of uh, this new program. Uh, we're going to review each country, each news uh, article, each event that goes on <clears throat> during the past month and communicate through it. Yes. Uh, Amir will provide us much insight, uh, um, uh, Bible-based insight, and provide context to us while I will try to challenge you mm-hmm. uh, based on the information of today's, uh, uh, that are, is made available uh, on today's uh, news, also on TV7 Israel News, and, and uh, wherever you may uh, acquire your news from. But. Amir, thank you so very thank much. You. Uh, thank you. And uh, this is all the time that we have for today. So I'd like to thank our viewers as well. And we will see you for the next program of TV7 Times Observer. Shalom. Mm-hmm.